Um, I'm here joined with Miss Curtin and we're going to run through some important points around RSE, which stands for uh, Relationships and Sex Education. Now, the aims of the webinar are here. So we're going to share the kind of overall curriculum aims for the subject. So RSE, Relationships and Sex Education, um, and an overview, yeah, good idea, of the objectives taught. So basically, Miss Curtin will tell you exactly what is taught in year five and year six and show you some examples of the resources that are used so that you can see specifically what your child will be learning. Um, if you have questions, you can pop them in the chat or you can fire them at us at the end and we will do our best to answer them. Yeah. The reason we have this webinar and think it's important is because if you are well equipped and you know already what your child will be learning, and if they come home with questions, then you uh, hopefully will feel confident to answer those questions being kind of forewarned with what we're doing. And that's really the idea. And it gives you the opportunity to see what we do and ask us any questions if you have any concerns. So hopefully you'll find it really useful. I'm sure you will. Um, a few key points before I pass over. Um, so first of all, um, what does the, the DfE's guidance say? Well, relationships education is statutory. And that means really that all children have to do it. Uh, and the DfE says that the focus really in primary school should be on what makes a really positive relationship, you know, what makes a really healthy relationship. And that's thinking about things like friendships or family relationships or relationships that children might have with other children or adults. Sex education, however, is not statutory, but it is recommended to be taught at an age appropriate level in primary schools. So really, the key point to take from this page is that you do have the right to withdraw your child from sex education as long as it's not what's covered in the science curriculum, but all children must do the relationship stuff. Now, the good news is with the relationships ed education, we kind of do that all the time. We've been doing that in the last half term um, and previously, lots of the PSHE teaching is about relationships and what that means. The reason we're doing this webinar now is because our sex education is coming up this half term. So you want to make sure you're forewarned and forearmed before we start teaching it in the remainder of this half term. So what is the science curriculum? Well, in year two, children have already learned that animals, including humans, have offspring that grow into adults. And they're introduced to the concept of reproduction and growth, but not actually how it happens. Now, the sciencey bit in year five um, is that children are taught about the life cycles of humans, um, and that includes reproduction. So they learn more about specific changes that happen to humans, including puberty and periods. So that stuff, they, they, you know, it's really important that they learn. It's in the national curriculum because it's, you know, it, these are changes that are happening to them, you know, now for many of the children. And so it's really important that they know about those changes. So all children must learn this stuff. But if there's anything else that Miss Curtin talks about that you're less comfortable with, you can opt them out of that. I hope that makes sense. So we're going to send you some more information along with this recording that will include the slideshow with a link to this guidance so you can read it in more detail. We'll also send out the jigsaw scheme of work, which I'll talk about in a moment, so you can see in more detail what, what is taught across the school. Now, jigsaw, I've used that word a few times, it is our scheme for teaching PSHE. And, and by having this brilliant scheme, it means that we've got real consistency throughout the school. And we know that there is progression from year one through to year six. We know that everything is age appropriate because the resources are all set out for the teachers, which makes everyone's job just so much easier. Um, we're going to send out this booklet for you, which has got information for you about Jigsaw. And we're also going to send out this overview, which shows all of the learning children do in the school and where it kind of fits into the into the year. OK, so look out for that email. Right, I'm now, I think, going to pass over to Miss Curtin. Uh, let me just uh, jiggle this around so you can see. Thank you. Um, over to you. So, um, year five um, is the Changing Me Objectives, and that's the unit of work that covers um, the next term. So, we explain how a girl's body changes during puberty and understand the importance of looking after themselves physically and emotionally. And they learn to understand that puberty is a natural process. None of us get, a, get out of it. Um, and that happens to everybody and that will be OK for them, just like it was for the rest of us. We also teach them to describe how boys and girls bodies change during puberty 
and how to express how they feel about the changes that will happen to them. We also taught them and helped them understand that sexual intercourse can lead to conception and that is how babies are usually made. And also to understand that sometimes people do need IVF to help them have a baby and to always appreciate how amazing it is that a human body can reproduce in these ways. And lastly, we teach them to identify what they are looking forward to in becoming a teenager and understand that this brings growing responsibilities like the age of consent and to how to sort of be confident and how to cope with the changes that growing up will bring. So in year five, now all of the diagrams through year five and the year six objectives, they're all really simple. They're all exceptionally accurate. Um, they are not pieces of artwork. They are scientific diagrams um, and they are all labelled with the correct terminology and vocabulary. And we would really urge you to also use the correct term terminology at home if conversations do arise and that slang words are not used. So here are some examples of the um, resources used in year five. And then here are some of the activities. So we've got the menstruation sorting card. So the children get to sequence the menstruation cycle, sort of points of view, which I always find really, really interesting. Just for example, when it comes to puberty, boys have less to worry about than girls. It can be a real sort of discussion point. Lots of people can share their views and also we can eradicate misconceptions and worries because sometimes they, they, they um, hold on to myths and not necessarily facts. And then we've got the menstruation worries. Um, and also we've got the puberty quiz for the boys. So some resources are mainly and mainly used with just the boys and some resources are mainly used with just the girls and some resources overlap. So it's important that we all understand that all of us have changes, just some we go into more depth, maybe with the girls about certain things and in more depth about the boys within certain things. But we all have a general overview of how we all change. It's important that we all understand. So year six, um, we teach another selection of objectives. So in year six, we teach them um, to explain how girls and boys bodies change during puberty and understand the importance of looking after themselves physically and emotionally and how they um, feel about the changes that will happen to them during puberty and how they express those feelings. Uh, we also teach them to describe how a baby develops from conception through the nine months of pregnancy and then how it is born and to recognise how they feel when they reflect on the development and birth of a baby. Um, we also teach them to understand how being physically attracted to someone changes the nature of the relationship and what might what that might mean about having a girlfriend or a boyfriend. Um, and we also teach them to understand the respect for one another is essential in a boyfriend girlfriend relationship and that they should not feel pressured into doing anything that they don't want to do. And we also teach them to be aware of the importance of a positive self-esteem and what they can do to develop it and how to express how they feel about their self-image and how to challenge negative body talk. And all of these, as you can see, have progressed from year five and are now we're moving into year six with some, some more complex concepts, but concepts they really should be introduced to before moving into secondary school. Again, as you can see, the diagrams are a bit like the like from the year five ones. That's because there is a clear, a clear consistency throughout the jigsaw scheme. You've got examples of key vocabulary, like I said, you know, really sticking to the factual key vocabulary and not using um, slang terminology. And then you've got some examples of the diagrams again. And then some examples of sort of the gender specific worry cards again, which I mentioned before, which are really, really good for discussion. So my penis doesn't look as big as other boys in my year. Does this mean that I'm not normal? And these are the kind of worries that I think a lot of them have privately so they would never necessarily ask these questions but I think the fact that we present them and we discuss them regardless I think is, is really important and can certainly put some work keep some worries at bay then you've got the should I shouldn't I so you know questioning that that morality have a boyfriend girlfriend at the age of 10 and you know should we or should we not and that again is really discussion provoking as well um OK, over to Mr. Duck. Thank you so much, Miss Curtin. Um, so there were some examples of the resources that we use, but also the really specific detailed objectives that are taught in year five and year six. And we really do stick to those objectives. So that is what is taught. Now, obviously, there is more that goes alongside that. And if if you would like to see the sort of full range of resources that we use, please email um, info at Grovelands and then we will get that either emailed to you or we can print you a pack so you, you know if you want to have the full range of resources 
then you you know you're very welcome to do that because we're very transparent and you know we want to share exactly what it is that we'll be that we'll be teaching really this page is all about first of all how we know what the where the children are when they start um mm -hmm. so children will always be building what they've learned before so if they're in year six now, they will have already learned about puberty in year five. So the teachers will start just by asking them questions. What can they remember? What do they know? What have they held on to? Because, you know, sometimes we forget stuff. And that really helps us know where the children are and what we need to cover and what we might need to sort of cover differently or cover again if the need arises. You can also help. You've seen the resources now. You know what the children will be covering. If you feel that it would benefit your child to have a bit of a chat before they start and go through some of the vocab or some of the concepts with you at home before they learn it in school, maybe because that might help them when they're doing it in school, then you're very welcome to do that if you think it would be useful. You know, for, for many, it might be that your preference is just to let them learn it in school, knowing that they might come home ask, asking some questions and just be ready to ready to answer those questions. And um, if we see that a child hasn't quite got it in a lesson, or maybe they've asked a question which makes us think, hmm, you know, we need to go back to this, then we would go back to them. We would maybe cover that key vocabulary with that child again or reteach certain content again just to make sure they've got it. Or, you know, we might just let you know. We might say, you know, give you a call and say this child said this. We just want you to know so that you can talk to them about it at home. And we would always have that kind of two way conversation with you and keep you updated where appropriate and um, so we do have further support and resources there's lots to draw on and Mrs Annings you know she's a real expert in this area where there are children with SEN who um, you know who might not quite get it with the teaching in class we do have resources that can help them um, if you would like further information or advice around these topics you can email Mrs Anning on the address shown on the screen and she will either give you some signposting or some guidance or some resources you could use at home with your children just to kind of really help them get there with it things like social stories or we have certain books that you you know that are really helpful around these areas so a few top tips these come from jigsaw themselves um, and they're in the parent book that we're going to email out to you but uh, it's things that you'll know already and that you'll do really well already if your child asks you questions be honest with them in an age-appropriate way you know it's important to answer their questions so that the your, your child knows that if they have a question they will get what they need from you and you know children are curious it's really important to celebrate that curiosity and just be really grateful that they're asking us questions because that's really what we want you know especially as they get older we want to keep those lines of communication open so that they always feel they've got someone to, to turn to when they've got one of those questions that they might see as embarrassing. And, you know, if we enjoy it and we answer it and we try and remove those taboos around it, they're more likely to come back to us in the future and ask for our help when they need it with something, you know, as they grow older, that might be something you really want them to tell you about. Uh, and, you know, we need to work together. It's really important that we work together. So if something comes up at home, and that you want us to help cover it in school, let your class teacher know. Uh, if something comes up at school, we'll let you know and we'll work together in that way so that all children get what they need from, you know, from school and from home. And before I move to the questions, um, what's really important to say is that if you do want to opt your child out of all of or a part of the sex education, that is fine. That is your decision. Um, we would respect that fully. All you would need to do is ping an email to info just being really clear about obviously who your child is and being clear about what you want to opt them out of um, so it might be that you want to opt them out of all of it or a part of it you know either way is okay as long as we know we can facilitate that and you just need to email the info we are not teaching this content at all this week which means that you've got time to ask any questions you know you've got time to review the content in more detail if you want to and just ping us an email over the course of this week if we don't hear from you we will assume they are going to take part and we will then start teaching them next week okay right questions now so i'm just going to stop sharing and uh, feel free to put it in the chat or unmute yourself and you know there's not so many of us here feel free to unmute and shout a question out uh, so a question from uh from tanya will year five children be taught about sexual penetration uh, as in the you know sexual intercourse itself 
I would have to complete to be I feel like that's a question that I'd like to double check on and then I will let you know Tanya um individually that's a good idea if I go back to the objectives for year five um they uh it looks to me like they are taught about um sexual in intercourse leading to conception and that's how babies are usually made it's not clear on what the detail is there so... I think they will need to understand that the penis has to enter the vagina for the sperm to be transferred that's my feeling too um and that would be something you could opt them out of if you prefer to cover it at home because that's not part of the science objectives for year five which are more based around puberty so uh, my understanding is that sexual intercourse is taught in year five so you, if you wanted to opt them out of that you would need to let us know and we would then do that uh, but we can absolutely send out the more detailed resources to you so that you can see the resources and make a decision for you for yourself thank you tanya a any other questions at all In which case, I'm going to say a big thank you to Miss Curtin for reviewing the content for us. As I say, do get, get back to us afterwards if you've got any more specific questions. Otherwise, I hope you have a really good day and we will, we will speak to you soon.